On the clearest of nights, when the winds of the Ethereum were calm and peaceful, The great merchant ships with their cargoes of Arcturian solar crystals felt safe and secure. Little did they suspect that they were pursued by... pirates. And the most feared of all these pirates was the notorious Captain Nathaniel Flint. <laughs> Flint and his band of renegades swooped in out of nowhere. And then, gathering up their spoils, vanished without a trace. Hey guys, I am Earthquee. Hello, and welcome to my first Let's Play of Treasure Planet. Yes, it's a movie license game, and I know it's kind of a weird choice, but you know what? I don't care. I I love this game, and you know what? It's been such a long time since I've played it. You know, lots of stuff going on in my in my life, just <laughs> normal stuff that's been keeping me from doing this. But but anyway. Let's get, let's get this show on the road! So you can probably tell, I've, I've already got uh, a few save files here. So, let us start fresh, shall we? Er, <laughs> sorry. Um, okay. We want to press the circle button to delete this. And, let us begin! So, obviously, you can probably tell uh, the graphics are not very, well, they're not very good, obviously, you can tell. Because, yeah, it's a 2002 PlayStation 2 game, but it's still not, it's still not a bad game. And, yeah, you'll see. You'll, you'll see why I think it's not a bad game. So, without further ado, let us begin our quest to a treasure planet. Certainly a lot of trouble over that odd little sphere. Those markings baffle me. Unlike anything I've ever encountered. Even with my vast experience and superior intellect, it would take me years to unlock its... Hey! <gasps> what? It's a map! Most awesome map ever. Wait, 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 wait! This is us, the planet Montressor. <laughs> That's the Magellanic Cloud. Woo! The Coral Galaxy. That's the Cygnus Cross. And that's the Carolina Abyss. Wait, what's this? What's this? What? It's Treasure Planet. No. <laughs> that's Treasure Planet. Flint's Trove? The loot of a thousand worlds? You know what this means? Heck yes, I do. Means we're going to risk our lives. Looking for a treasure we don't even know actually exists. Well, no, I guess we do know exi it exists. I mean, there's a map to it, so, you know, unless someone out there is trolling us. But anyway. <laughs> and here we have the gameplay. Hey! Hey! Ah, there you are, Jim. I've been tinkering with this map device, and I've made some startling discoveries. Oh, have you now? What are we doing here? We need to get to the planet before anyone else gets there. Calm down, Jim. Treasure planet. Jim, it's that sort of attitude that will get you into serious trouble. Yeah, listen to Doppler. You see, the map is somehow linked to these ancient navigational beacons. Calium and no one has noticed these? That there are hundreds of these beacons scattered all over the galaxy. I've located a pocket of them right here on Montressor. Oh, really? Jim, it is up to you to go find these beacons and see if you can activate them. No problem. I don't think you'll need any special equipment to open the beacons. 
Keep your wits about you. You may have to perform a task to get the job done. As per usual. Doc. We'll be back as quick as an Alponian solar cruiser. Right, more? Alponian solar cruiser. <laughs> All right. So here we finally have the game itself. So obviously you can use the, uh, well, you can use the circle button here to talk, as it says. And you use the left analog stick to walk or run. And here you, can, you have to press the X button to jump, reach the first beam. So we'll, we will do that. My god, that was so difficult! Ah, yes, auto saving. Really nice. Which means we don't have to. Yeah. Uh, we can. It, you can pretty much save at any time, and if we. If we come across, you know, uh, an important event like unlocking a beacon. So here it says we have to press double. Uh, we have to. Yeah, we have to press X to jump twice. And here we have. Our next, uh, character, John Silver. Hello there, boyo. Hello. I see you made the acquaintance of the old pal Murphy here. Murphy, Murphy, Murphy! Oh, heavens, I wondered where you'd got to. I haven't seen you for ages. Where did you lose him? Uh-huh. You know Morph? Isn't he like your pet? That I do. And it be John Silver at your service, sir. Crook, handyman, and just between you and me, a bit of a scallywag. Yeah, I couldn't tell by that the big cyborg arm of yours, or the, the fact that you're a pirate. Of yours. So, we'll be seeing a lot of each other. Hmm. And Murphy here, he's an adaptable little fella. Well, he is a shapeshifter. If you ever need to whack at something that's a bit stubborn, like them buttons, say, just press the jump button, followed by the attack button, and Murphy will hammer it into submission for you. So yeah, just as he explained, we need to press this big glowing blue button. And to do that, we just need to press X and then square immediately after. So if you see these... Oh, Traploons, lad. A spacefarer's most treasured possession. Collect a round hundred of them in each area that you reach, and you'll activate another beacon. So yeah, just as he explained and just as I was doing, I'm collecting... I have to collect these drabloons. You know, they're not dubloons, they're drabloons. You know, there's a big difference. D difference being that they're in space. So if you saw that thing, that was an electrobot. If, uh, if it sees you and gets close enough to you, it explodes. Kind of like the Treasure Planet equivalent of a bob -omb. <laughs> But, yeah, it only takes one, one hit to kill. And these guys, they're called noggins. These take two hits. So, they're easy. And also, if you notice, up in the left-hand corner, up, upper left-hand corner, that's Jim's, that's Jim's life bar. And it can go up to, oh, what's, what's 30 times 4, tw okay, yeah, 120 blips of life. That's the maximum. So I can get, I can get 30 more besides the three, uh, the three bars you see up there. And we have silver again, as you notice. It's a grand morning, eh, lad? And it puts us right in front I've of it. I've been checking up on these yeah, peculiar like that. pads. Whatever. And I reckon that they'll be right useful to our little friend Morph here. Oh, really? I figures that these will give him the strength of a... a cyborg, say. Allow me to genuflect in front of your lad. I need to break open anything tougher than timber. Just press the jump button over the pad, and Morph will give you all the strength you need. Sounds awesome. They're pretty useful for picking things up, too. Try crouching near a barrel and you'll see what your new muscles can do. Watch out, though, matey. These things never last for long. Yeah, they're kind of, these things are kind of like power-ups. So, this thing, I pretty much just call them a morph pad. And here, you just press X to activate, and now we got a big pair of cyborg arms. Now allow us to pretty much smash anything in our path. So one of our first tasks is to break these crates. So, yeah. Um, okay, sorry if you heard that. Uh, yeah, it only lasts for 15 seconds. At least this particular effect does. And it's really easy to just go back and replenish the time. Yeah, it's easy. And the nice thing about it is... 
Ah, and I jumped that way too. But you know it's okay. Oh, these guys—they run from you when you have the cyborg arms, and they—they they go down in one hit. Pretty much any enemy goes down in one hit if you have the cyborg arms, which is a really nice little bonus. A couple of doubloons there, and up oh, there's another noggin. He's gonna hit us, yeah. Yeah, two hits as per usual, and circle button does a spinning kick. Uh, that can be useful sometimes. And uh, the right. Ah, dang it! I. <laughs> Epic fail. <laughs> but you know what? It's okay. We needed to get on the other side anyway. And if you're wondering, um, there's no way to get a game over here. Um, even if even if you plummet to your death, you cannot get a game over. You know, just real nice. Real nice thing that they do. So the last crate is on the other side of this wall, and we have opened up our second beacon. Oh, Jim. You need to chill, dude. Not that exciting. It's only one out of 85 beacons. You want to get 100%, which, which I do plan on doing. I want to get 100% here, and I completely missed a few dribbloons back there. So if you notice, I, I, I tend to double jump pretty often. It, it helps when you're jumping any sort of gap, just to be safe. Uh, come on. Okay, so if you also noticed something else, these guys. Jim and, uh, and Jim and Morph, they kind of act like Jack and Daxter in that Morph, he kind of acts like Daxter in that he he grabs things that Jim cannot. Jimbo, you'll find these here green energies wherever you roam. Collect enough of them, and it's a beacon you'll be getting. Yep, just as he explained there. Have to collect these green energies if you want to activate another beacon, and that is a robot docker. He takes three hits to kill. <laughs> Killing a robot. That's... yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the thing about these green energies is um, if you die and you haven't collected them all yet, you have to start over. You know, just, just basically means you have to collect them all over again. Which can be kind of annoying. Um, you know, but as long as you know where they are... Uh, you can... they're pretty easy, especially here. This is mostly a tutorial sort of level. Yeah, almost, <laughs> almost thought I wasn't going to make that jump. I would have lost all my green energies. So yeah, you notice... I say, I say notice a lot. I'm sorry if I do. I tend to say... I tend to repeat myself. I apologize. My little boaties float down to me. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I really misjudged that. <laughs> yeah. Epic fail. So yeah, I have to collect them all over again. Ugh. Okay, but... Yeah. Shows I have to be careful here. <sighs> don't wanna... I don't... I do not... I don't want to suffer the let's play of Kurt, so I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> okay, so... Lower me boats must collect green energies. <sighs> yeah, first time... These, these are really not hard to collect. You just really need to watch your footing. Yee! Double jump often. And yay! We have found them all. We're, we've collected them all. And that's our third beacon. <laughs> Jeez. It's not that exciting! I mean, yeah, it does get us one step closer to Treasure Planet, but yeah, still. <laughs> Calm down. But yeah, um, one thing about those barrels I should mention is they have brass rings like this. Ah, go away, you die. Die, thank you. 
So yeah, if they have brass rings like this, that means they carry life energy, whereas the ones with gold rings, of course, carry dragoons. And that little cylindrical thing over there, we need to lift it up, but not with our bare hands. Excuse me, not with our bare hands. We need to pick it up with our cyborg arms, because yeah, pretty much touching it or hitting it, like like if we're, if we're too close to it and we hit it, it explodes in our faces and that hurts. So yeah, <laughs> don't want to do that. And hello, Silver, again. Talk to me. Oh, hello again, lad. Hello. Now this type of pad lets him morph into a spare hand for flipping switches. Flipping switches. Is that right, little one? <laughs> flipping switches. Yes, he, he read my mind. You come across a but switch no, I actually just, I you. remembered that. Find one of these pads and press the jump button. Morphe will do the switching for you. But you've only got a wee bit of time before the effect wears off. So best be quick about it. Will do. If you notice, that hand looks familiar. Oh my god! Doppler's hand has been cut off! And we're using it! That is, that's just so wrong! Ah. <laughs> but it's a let's play. I'm allowed to be silly. So yeah, just have to flip that switch, open the gate. It's just a gate, Jim! Jeez! Just a freaking gate! Yeah, it's best to do the, the spin kick. And I guess just because I haven't played this in a while, I'm, I, I sort of associate using the square button to do a punch. Um, yeah, these have life energy, and now I'm at, now I'm at complete health, and yeah, we've come full circle here. But, we're not done yet. We've only collected half of the amount of dragoons that we need. There's still more tasks to be done. Um, so, before we get around to doing that, um, we need to go, we need to go through this gate. And climb these rocky rocks. <laughs> I know, that's kind of redundant. Um, yeah, a bit of an arduous climb, and here we have more dragoons. And there's not always going to be a hundred of these co to collect in a given area. Uh, sometimes it's a hundred, sometimes it's a little more, but yeah, we have to catch Delilah! And in the Treasure Planet universe, she's known as a Bulliados, I'm guessing that's how it's pronounced. Ah! Ah! I almost thought I would fall there. Ugh, oh, she's annoying. I was able to catch her pretty well the first time, but yeah. You have to chase her all around here until you catch her. Bit of a bit of a jerk. Oh, yes. Come on. Almost got her. Almost got her. Yes. <laughs> all right. There's another beacon activated. So, guess what else we have to do? We have more treasure to collect. Ah, Jim, and you're whooping, you almost got hit! Idiot. <laughs> but no, Jim is a good kid. He's alright. Um, yeah, I really don't feel like going after these guys. I just want to get my treasure and leave. I want treasure! Give me treasure! <sighs> so yeah, um, this building right here... Yeah, now we have to backtrack. <laughs> Goody. Uh, but yeah, I guess I'll, I'll point it out when I get to it. When I get back to it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, pr you probably noticed that little info thing down there. Just tells us how to go into first person perspective. Um, I tend to not do that. It does help. I mean, going into first person does help a little bit, but it's not its not really that essential. It's not that necessary. Especially if you know where you're going. Oh, oh. Apologize there. Um, I have to confess, I am playing this on my computer, 
on a very old, cruddy computer. <laughs> so, um, it tends to want to go to screensaver every once in a while. So I have to take the time to move the mouse. Otherwise, I might end up falling to my death or getting or getting uh, hit by an enemy. But yeah, this building here, this is Jim's home, the Benbo Inn. Guys, uh, I gotta say, likeness pretty well. The they got they got its likeness pretty well here. So yeah, just gotta break these open, jump these gaps. Yeah, pretty, pretty standard stuff. But oh, it gets better. It does get better. Whoop. All right, now we just need eight more. Um, let's see, let's see. I feel like, uh, oh, I need to go back through that gate. So I'm pretty sure I know where the rest of those dragoons are. If I can get to this, if I can get through those easily, then that'd be good. So, before I go to those ones over there, you probably noticed in the left hand side of the screen, I have to jump this boat here. Ah! <laughs> Alright, so we got five here, and the last three are just over that gap here. Yee! Oh my god, why? Why, why, why? Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, after having to go all the way back again, just to get to here, we've finally activated our fifth beacon for this area. At last. That is something to cheer about. So, with that, let us head back on through the portal. And yes, we have our starry loading screen, which, you know, I like that they allow you to change the speed and direction you fly at, so it's not, it's not that arduous to sit through. Of course, now we can move on. But, I think, uh, I think we're gonna end it off right here for now. So, yeah, uh, if you guys, if you guys like, please subscribe. I need the followers. <laughs> I need the followers! Please! Please follow me. So yeah, um, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna end it off here, and I will see you guys next time.